let us sit down kneel or sit down on both our heads down in prayer our gracious heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful evening we thank you for bringing us here to worship you to sing praises to you and to listen to your word and to commit ourselves to you as we seek to understand peace in this world help us to understand what peace of jesus really means we ask this in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ a few months ago i read in a newspaper that in some north indian state a muslim family was not allowed to move into a house which they have bought because that house was in a locality where the other families are only hindus those other families came and protested to the civil officers saying we don't want to allow this family in because of the problem of love jihad we don't want to allow any muslim family for this it may cause violence and so they had to sell their house and go somewhere else a couple of months later the same newspaper brought out another news about a boy who was severely beaten up for falling in love with another girl this time religion was not the problem but the caste was a problem they both belonged to hindu religion but this boy fell in love with a girl from the dominant caste and men from the dominant caste came and beat him up brutally and when the news came to the came up in the newspaper he was fighting for his life we can never be peaceful in any community which defines itself in an ever narrowing circles of exclusivism the theme for today's sermon is my peace i give to you that is a quote from jesus's words peace is always inclusive not exclusive peace is always dynamic not delicate peace is always accommodative not compromising peace is always robust but not ruthless absence of peace does not mean absence of conflict does not mean there is peace when jesus said my peace i give unto you jesus all also followed it up in the next sentence itself to tell us not like the world which gives you peace but my peace is different jesus wanted us to differentiate between how jesus understands peace and how jesus wants his disciples to exercise peace and how the world wants to exercise the peace this is a quotation from john's gospel so if we go through john's gospel and the narrative on how jesus conducts himself in the john's gospel we may get some edifying reflections about how jesus understands peace in a community in john's gospel chapter 4 we find the samaritan woman coming to fetch water at an odd hour every one of the biblical interpreters find that woman coming at that hour is quite odd because she comes lonely out of the town comes to the well where she finds a lonesome stranger sitting in, in the well it is odd that a woman can come out of the town at that hour 
and it is interpreted that this woman wants to shun the community or the community has shunned her. She doesn't want to face, she doesn't want to engage in the community. But after a long discourse with that woman, the woman was ultimately sent back into the community which she was hesitating to engage with. And she runs back into the community to say, look, there is someone there at the well. Come and see whether he is the Messiah. She becomes the apostle to that community which she was hesitating to engage. Peace will never come if we hesitate to engage with someone whom we want to avoid. Jesus encourages us and emboldens us to engage with anyone and everyone with whom we are hesitant to engage. Peace of Jesus may also sometime disturb us. Jesus will not leave us in peace if anyone around us is not having peace. We find that in John chapter 5 and John chapter 9. John is a gospel which does not record many miracles of Jesus. These are the rare miracles that John records here. And in both the miracles, it is Jesus who goes and offers a cure. The persons who are ill, they don't ask for a cure. In John chapter 5, we find Jesus approaching a person with 38 years of ailment, waiting for some cure, unable to get that. When Jesus approaches that man and asks him whether he wants to be cured in John chapter 5, Jesus was simply expecting an answer, one word answer to say yes. But that person was unable to say that word because he was so much used to be waiting for a cure for 38 years. He gives so many reasons why he was there for 38 years. And then Jesus cures him. Jesus could have told him, stand up and walk. He would have stood up and walked and would have dissolved into the crowd that was walking. But Jesus did not do that. Jesus added another command in between, stand and walk. That command is, take up your mat. Stand up, take up your mat and walk. And that taking up the mat drew the attention of many. Because it was a Sabbath day. And taking up a mat on a Sabbath day and walking symbolizes a person taking up the load and it symbolizes the person working. And people are disturbed that this person is taking up a mat and walking and breaking the Sabbath regulation. For 38 years when this man was fighting for his life, for 38 years when this man was lying near the pool waiting for a cure, unable to get it, the society was at peace. It was not disturbed. But when, after 38 years, this man stands up to walk, the society is disturbed because he has broken a small regulation. What a deceptive peace that the society was living in. Jesus will never allow us to live in a deceptive peace unless Everyone around us are living in peace. And in chapter 9, we find a person born blind, begging in the streets. And Jesus goes and cures him. He spits to the ground, makes a mud out of the spit, and then smears in his eyes, asks him to go and wash, and he gains his eyesight and goes around and the community was disturbed when he was questioned the, when the parents were questioned the parents tell the Sanhedrin the Jewish leaders saying he is of age ask him don't harass us that means that boy was nearly 18 years old he is of age so that he can answer for himself in a court of inquiry and for 18 years, 
The community was at peace when this, man, this boy was begging at the side of the streets. No one was disturbed. But now they were disturbed. After 18 years, he has got his eyesight. Two things disturbed them. Two petty things. One, Jesus made mud with his spit. And that symbolizes working, digging with a shovel. Jesus broke the law of the Sabbath by making mud. And he was cured of his blindness. The Mosaic regulation during the first century was so much crazily interpreted that a doctor may give a cure on a Sabbath day only to keep the sickness as it is, that the sick person's sickness condition may not worsen. But if a doctor administers any medicine that will give him a, make him a little better, then the doctor would be sinning by committing to work. That means that he had worked, he had given a cure. So during the Sabbath day, during the first century, none of the doctors were willing to break the Sabbath law. To be branded as a sinner, there were many sick persons who were fighting for their lives, who were allowed to die on a Sabbath day because of this stringent regulation which was interpreted in a rather crazy way. Jesus cured this man. For 18 years, this society was at peace when he was begging on the streets. Now, when Jesus has assured peace, shalom, fuller life for this person, the whole society was disturbed, the establishment was disturbed, saying, how can this happen on a Sabbath day? He cannot live in peace when there is another man who is suffering. That is the peace of Jesus Christ. In between, in chapter 8, we find a woman being dragged to Jesus, saying she had been caught in committing adultery. And Jesus looks up and tells those people who have dragged her, I tell them, he who has committed no sin, let him throw the first stone. The Jewish society wanted the establishment of commercial sex work to work in the community so that they can satiate their sexual desires upon the commercial sex workers. But they also took pleasure in stoning them to death whenever they are caught, thereby giving them the satisfaction, moral satisfaction of keeping the Mosaic law. They also wanted to have this establishment of commercial sex was to be there in the society and they also wanted to fulfill Mosaic law. Jesus saw through this hypocrisy and told them, he who has not sinned, let him throw the first stone. And so from the young to the elder, everyone went away without throwing a stone. That means all of them were involved in satiating their sexual urge with the illicit relationship with any commercial sex worker. Peace of Jesus Christ is a comprehensive, deep-running peace. It is not a partial peace which assures peace only for the dominant group, allowing those who are without rights, without human rights, without social rights, without political rights to suffer. Peace of Jesus Christ is an all-encompassing peace that has to touch everyone, that has to assure fuller life for everyone. If you go outside Mark's gospel, uh, John's Gospel, we find in Luke's Gospel two incidents, two persons who wanted to have peace desperately. Luke chapter 18 and chapter 19. In Luke chapter 18, there was a person, a young person, who was impertinent enough to come and waylay Jesus to ask for peace. A rich young man, was convinced that he had fulfilled all the Mosaic laws, who is at peace with himself. Now he wants to be assured of 
the eternal life so that his peace will be assured both here and there and jesus tells him this is not enough you are a rich young person you have fulfilled all the mosaic laws but there are many people around who are poor who don't have anything to eat who don't have a roof over their head who don't have a cloth upon their back how can you be at peace sell everything give it to the poor and then follow me then you will have peace you cannot have peace until the last person the community has everything and the fullness of life is ensured to the every last person in the community and in luke chapter 19 we find another person zacchaeus who was also a rich person chief of the tax collectors but he lacked peace he knew that people did not like him for his profession and he was short in stature and he heard that jesus is coming that way he wanted to go and see him and he was also afraid that he might be punched and showed because of the hostility that people feel for his profession and so he wanted to have a porch upon which to get up to see jesus and jesus understood and perceived that there was a longing in his heart for peace so he went straight to that tree stood under the tree looked up to him and called zacchaeus and jesus invited himself to zacchaeus's house saying i want to dine with you when a rabbi goes into anyone's house during the first century that time that will be an open house anyone in the community can come in and listen uh, stand behind the dinner table and listen to the rabbi's discourse it is a open house and during that discourse zacchaeus stands up to say that he is going to give half his wealth to the poor and if he had deceived anyone he will give for for them uh, for to refund those whom he has deceived what would he have left in his life to live on this person wanted to ensure that all around him had fuller life all around him had shalom he wanted shalom so he wanted to ensure that all around him had life in full and so jesus assured this person life then and there itself salvation has come to that house my dearly beloved the peace of jesus christ is an all encompassing peace we cannot live in an ever narrowing circles of exclusivism exclusiveness to taste the peace of jesus jesus always pushes us to go out of our circles go out of our comfort zones to engage with the community engage with those areas which we hesitate to engage with to come to realities with our own communities and societies and thereby ensuring peace for everyone jesus encourages us to engage and emboldens us to engage and to have peace peace of jesus christ is an all encompassing peace until the last person in the community has peace until the last person in the community has life in full no one else can have life in full no one else can taste peace jesus said my peace i give to you not like the world gives but my peace i give to you peace of jesus is different from the peace of this world the peace of this world may be ruthlessly imposed the peace that this world speaks of the peaks that rulers speak of is a ruthlessly imposed peace during jesus' time the roman empire was imposing peace ruthfully and they made propaganda of their peace saying pax romana it was a peace ruthlessly imposed by military power military might of an empire upon hapless people enslaved people that is not the peace jesus was talking about 
if peace has to be real if peace has to be the peace of jesus christ then the peace has to be ensured to the last person in the community may god help us to be ambassadors of peace and may god help us to be harbingers of peace in our neighborhood